Skynet deal. This is very much a campaign issue. Now, joining me live is Liberal Senator James Patterson. James, good to see you. Can you give us a straight answer? How did this happen under the government's nose on your watch? Laura, the Chinese government doesn't play by the same rules that the Australian government plays by. We are bound by the rule of law. We are a liberal democracy. We respect conventions of international relations and we deal with our uh, partners in the Pacific transparently and openly. The Chinese government doesn't do that and the Chinese government is willing to do things which we are not willing to do uh, and we should never do. And that does make it sometimes more difficult uh, to deal with them and like sometimes there will be things that this will happen. Well, Laura, I'm obviously limited in what I can say uh, in public, um, but I think people understand what I mean when I say the Chinese government is willing to do things in the Pacific and elsewhere in the world that the Australian government, bound by the rule of law and conventions of international relations, would not engage in. So is this down to money? Well, we're very transparent and we're very open in how we deal uh, with our partners. We don't do anything underhand. We don't do anything uh, in secret. We deal uh, with them openly and honestly and on the merits. Uh, and the Chinese government has a track record all around the world, not just in the Pacific, of behaving very differently. So you weren't willing to outspend China, basically? Well, I don't think it's a question of that. We are the Solomon Islands' most significant foreign aid partner by a long, long way. And it is one of our biggest destinations of foreign aid and mm. other forms of assistance, including uh, security assistance. We have been their partner of choice for many years, going back to the Ramsey intervention to ensure security and stability. Mm. We've been a very generous and significant donor of COVID vaccines as well. And that is consistent across the Pacific and has been for many years since this government made a decision to step up and to really refocus our international aid program to the Pacific, which is our neighbourhood and which is our, who are our family and friends. So if it's not money over the table, is it money under the table that you're talking about? Well, there certainly have been public media reports uh, elsewhere in the world, Laura, of China being willing to pay bribes uh, to public officials, to politicians. Um, I can't confirm uh, whether that happened in the Pacific or in the Solomon Islands, but that is tactics that they have been Incredibly publicly accused of in the past. Yeah, but the pro problem is that you've got this fertile ground that China was able to cosy up to the Solomon Islands. Your government has been in power for almost a decade. How do you allow this relationship to happen under your watch? I mean, there's a bit of complacency on our, our side, isn't there? No, I don't agree, Laura. And the reality is the Solomon Islands is a sovereign country. Mm. They have a right to self-determination and to make their own decisions in their national interest. Australia is not Russia. We don't impose our will on our neighbours and we can't force them to do things that they don't want to do. Uh, all we can do is calmly, clearly explain to them what we think the consequences are of their decision. And in this instance, I think our sh concerns are widely shared, not just in the Pacific, but around the world. And I hope the Solomon Island government really carefully considers the implications of this in their own interest, for their own sovereignty. But we're not going to talk down to them, we're not going to lecture them and we're not going to um, tell them what they can and can't do in their own national interest. We are actually consistent. When we say we believe in self-determination and the sovereignty of states, we actually mean that. Yeah. The Chinese government can't say the same, but we do. It sounds like you are on exactly the same page as Richard Miles. I wish that was true, Laura, but Richard Miles says one thing when he's in China and a different thing when he's in, in Australia. In China, he says he welcomes the Chinese government's involvement in the Pacific in a speech which curiously was never available on his website, but which your viewers can read on my website if you're interested. Isn't but when he's in Australia, he says it's a failure perhaps? of the Australian government if they are allowed to participate in the Pacific. So he's got to explain that contradiction. OK, so he said the Solomon Islands have the right to deal with anyone. Australia shouldn't expect the Solomon Islands to deal with us exclusively. Do you disagree with both, both of those statements? No, but I do disagree with him when he said that fears about Chinese military bases in the Pacific were overblown uh, and shouldn't be taken seriously. They've always been a very real risk and he should know better given his background in the Pacific, but clearly he does not. And I disagree with him when he says that it's in our interests and it's a good thing to have China involved in the Pacific. The reality is we are engaged in a zero-sum game or influence in the Pacific. It is a contest and inviting them in and telling them they should do more in the Pacific is not consistent with that and he has to explain that contradiction. OK. You, the Prime Minister says it's chilling and concerning uh, that he's made these comments. Isn't it chilling and concerning that this has actually happened and can you reverse it? 
It is very concerning. There's no question about that, Laura, and the government's been very honest and transparent about that. Anyone who understands the history of uh, the war in the Pacific in World War II will understand why it is strategically important, and that's why it's so alarming that Richard Miles got this wrong. Um, we're going to continue to respectfully engage with the government of the uh, Solomon Islands and all other governments in the Pacific, and we're going to take Prime Minister Sogavari at his word and encourage him to live up to the commitments he'd made, not just to us, but to the people of the Solomon Islands, that there will never be a Chinese military base uh, on sovereign territory of the Solomons. In the middle of an election campaign, it seems that despite the, the war of words, that you and Labor are as one. I wish that was true, Laura, but I think uh, the evidence suggests otherwise. I think Richard Miles has been very clear in his, both his pamphlet, which he published last year, and in his speech in Beijing, although I know he's not proud but of it. They're just words. Talk We're talking about, about actions. Well, I think words are pretty important, uh, Laura. Uh, words are incredibly important, particularly if you're the well, they haven't got your government deputy anywhere, prime minister actually. of Australia. Well, I, I think there are obviously limits to what we can uh, assert in the Pacific. We don't uh, pretend that we can control the outcomes of sovereign governments. They do have to make decisions in their own interest. All we can do is explain to them and work with them. And we do remain the, part, the security partner of choice for many governments in the Pacific, the Solomons included, when they had disturbances uh, in recent months. It was Australia that they called and asked to come to their aid. And we quickly sent the AFP and other uh, services to assist them to get on top of that. And uh, we will continue to do that whenever we're asked. James Patterson, always good to talk to you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Laura.